How's it going guys? And yep, you guessed it. Today we are LS swapping an RX-7. But yes, I am LS swapping the rotary car. Sorry guys, I tried. It's just not for me. I'll always love rotary engines. Like I said, I've had them, you know, for a very, very long time. I've covered thousands of rotor powered miles. I'm just over it. It's time to move on to something else and LS is what it's gonna be. But anyway, LS1 is going in the Montego car. Why? Because I already have all the stuff. I have the swap kit, the exhaust, like everything. So, I'm gonna put that LS1 into Montego car and have an FDR7 that I can daily with heat and AC and all that cool stuff. And even like this was a stupid, if I could go back, I would have just done a regular, you know, non ported rotary and just had it be a nice clean FD. But I screwed up. I don't have any more REW stuff, so there's no way I'm gonna like sell this and, you know, do all that craziness. So I'm just going to LS, period. All right. And for the white car, this is the LS3 that's going to go back in the white car. They updated the swap kit, so the white car will be getting the new updated swap kit and all that good stuff. And finally putting the 8.8 .8 rear end in it, which will do away with all that craziness what I was having with the factory rear end. So, this is going to get interesting. But in this video, we are putting the LS1 in this Montego RX-7 and getting it running and driving. It's one video, so stay tuned. But the first step, we got to get the LS1 up in the air get the oil pan switched around because it wasn't a 350Z which requires a front sump oil pan and the FDRX7 um, it just uses like you know just a, the standard um, oil pan that come with the Camaro so yeah <sighs> alright so first I'm gonna do that and uh, then I gotta pull the swap kit off the white RX7 and put it on the Montego car then we can set the engine in start hooking stuff up and fire this thing up so let's get to it we got the car almost ready um, kind of all the little tedious stuff like you have to cut these brackets off I'm about to mask this off and kind of hit this spot right here and this little rust spot right there and right there where the brake line comes through you know just since we got it out might as well do it uh, hammer the firewall back looks pretty good um, they say you have to do this but I'm not sure if you need to or not but it definitely gives you more room and it looks pretty good so I'm really happy with it paint didn't bust so it's awesome um, got all the heat shields out of the way, the old fuel system, um, you can use the factory fuel system, uh, but I just like to use the little Corvette fuel pressure regulator filter combo thing. Makes your life easy, just one line go up to the front. Yeah, that's where we're at right now. Um, so I'm going to paint this stuff so it can go ahead and dry since it's nice and warm out. And then I'm going to probably do the oil get the oil pan switched over on the LS1 so I just need to put the old oil pump or the old oil pan back on and um, I need to go pull the fuel system off the white car and I need to pull the swap kit off of it so I'll probably take this K member off that way when I take that one off I can put that put this one on and the car will be you know able to roll around but yeah, like always, I'm frantic, running around like crazy to get this done. But I think this is gonna work out great. I'm tired of seeing this car sit around. I think it has been sitting, let's go look. Like I said, I bought it when it was like, it was blown up. I had an engine, put the engine in it. Um, it probably ran for like 60 miles and blew up again. Yeah, 2009 was the last time this car was um, registered so yeah that's a long time ago it's time to get it back on the road i have driven it since then and of course it's been running y'all seen that um yeah i'm still with the rotary stuff guys i'm sorry i don't have the money for it. ls stuff's easy i mean it's just like you know it just works so you know maybe in the future if i get a lot of money i can get that 20b i always wanted or something but uh not holding my breath for that <laughs> Yeah, the cost of a 20B right now is more than I have in this whole entire swap. That's counting the engine transmission and the swap kit. So, yeah, I don't think that's going to happen, guys. But, all right, I'm going to uh, 
get this stuff knocked out. So I'm gonna paint these, let these dry, switch the oil pan. The next time you guys see me, I'll be sitting the engine down in this thing. All right, we got the pan on here. Got the mounts on. Uh, I got the shifter covered up so I don't damage it. Uh, got the K-member in. Got my fuel line ran. Kind of runs on the tunnel, so it's kind of a pain to do with the uh, the transmission in here. Uh, yeah, I think I got everything out of the way. So now we're about to try to slide this bad boy in there. Right, guys i can't remember where i left off at it's been a couple of days um since i last recorded but i'm sure you guys got to see that we got the engine in this thing right now i'm working on getting the uh i guess the main power side of the car done you know hooking the starter and the alternator and the battery and stuff together and this is like the power block where that stuff come in at and heck this thing i did like the relocated the battery in the bag like forever ago I can't remember where the battery tied in originally, but I'm pretty sure it's somewhere in this area. But anyway, I'm just going to connect the starter and the alternator to one side of this power block and then connect the power wire for the battery to another side. And I'm pretty sure that's where the car gets all its power from. So this goes and feeds all the rest of the car. So that should be good. And that, I know they make like a little bracket that holds this kind of nice. I need to get that. Oh yeah, I think the... Yeah. The battery connects somewhere right in here because like it just basically sits down on it i remember that now it's like, it's like right there but anyway i'm gonna do that um we've already got the fuel lines and stuff hooked up in the back uh, i was going to try to reuse the wiring harness i have for this you know the ls swap but i don't think stuff i really don't feel like hmm, it's a nice tear just falling falling out of the car but I don't really want to mess with like that tangled up mess. So this wiring harness will probably will probably end up going back in the 350Z because it actually worked really good with 350Z. It's got that little whatever you want to call it, little firewall right there, so the ECU could sit right there. So it worked out pretty good. But yeah. I'm going to get that knocked out real quick and get some power to this thing and um, get the fuel system working, all that good stuff. And we'll put the exhaust on and we'll actually fire this thing. But yeah, I'm going to get all that stuff done real quick. Basically, just get the power side of the, the uh, electrical system hooked up so everything will actually come on and work. And then we'll get figure out our fuel pump signal, our starter signal, which I'm pretty sure is like in these two little plugs right here do that and then the car will be pretty much where it can run and I'll put the radiator and exhaust and stuff like that on it figure out my fan circuit and then this thing should be ready to go out on the road and drive around and then we'll put the coilovers on it you know the other wheels so it'll actually be you know drivable and then take the thing get in alignment and then we'll go do some road trips but I'm getting way ahead of myself so first Let's get this power system done and I'll show you what it looks like once I get everything done. 
All right, guys, I got the starter circuit figured out, uh, the battery and everything, it's all hooked up. Uh, it's rough right now. Like I said, I'm just gonna take a quick break, show you what it looks like, and uh, explain what I did. So, left this little power block here. Like I said, uh, the blue wire is the battery. It's just running down beside the swap kit and going out right there with the rear brake line. But these are actually the lines from the power harness on the FDR X7. The one for the alternator is going to the alternator. The one for the starter is going to the starter. So that's kind of cool that they worked out. Um, so that's that's kind of cool. <laughs> Don't have to buy any wire. But yeah, it just runs right through this little block. The battery hooks up right here, like the factory ones, like it goes right here and like sits on the battery. But you know, basically just took that out and threw that in there. Let's run down the front and it's gonna run across the oil pan and then there will be like a grommet, you know, some stuff holding it up and it'll be taped up. So it'll look really factory. The ground for the engine is actually a ground, the uh, the ground off of a 350Z. I don't know why, it's like perfect. There's these two places right here, screwed right down, goes right up here to the block or the cylinder head. And this one right here will go right there. It's the same thing I had it, or the way I had it on the 350Z. So it's kind of cool that that worked out. We got the starter wire and the signal wire for the Mazda RX-7. We're long enough to reach for the LS-1. I just have to cut this end off and put an end on it for the LS-1. Yeah, that's kind of cool. So, nah. but yeah, just want to show you that before I got got it all wrapped in you know wrapped in tape and everything, so you really really see what was going on. But anyway, so I'm gonna do that and finish that up and then we'll move on to the fuel pump circuit and all that stuff and uh, get this thing fired up. All right guys, one of the things cool about RX-7s, even the FC, if you have like an FC, the turbo car, it has like a really long uh, throttle cable. Don't know if a lot of people know this, but you can save yourself a bit of money and just cut down the factory cable. Uh, it's pretty straightforward. Basically all you do is just cut the little, little wire stop off the end you know, off the end of your wire, pull the wire out of the cable, and then you can just cut it down. And if you pull the wire out of the little little end, whatever, check this guy out. And this is just a factory FD throttle cable. So if you like pull the wire out of the end before you cut it, like grab a pair of pliers right there and just pull it out, you can hammer that flare out with just a piece of solid stock and basically slide it back on there and recrimp it and use it. So that's the factory FD throttle cable just cut down. And all you gotta do is run to O'Reilly's and get you one of like the little, you know, screw on type wire clamp things, whatever. Throw all cable done, so that'll save you like a hundred bucks. <laughs> but we got the the clutch master cylinder in, got the line hooked up. I'll kind of let it uh, just drip bleed. Uh, it's got positive pressure on it, so I'm assuming that's good. I uh, got the radiator and everything all in. I uh, just got to get some clamps for the hoses. The uh, expansion tank is in. So we're moving along pretty good. Um, I was going to try to figure out the wire, but I think I'm just going to like temporary roughly do it because I would like to buy like the uh, the harness that's for the FDR 7 where everything just plugs up and works. Um, I think it's like a thousand bucks, so that's definitely not in the budget. So. Who knows? For right now, it's just kind of rough sitting in the over there in the corner, and uh, you know, maybe it'll get a little nicer later. Because I'd like for the gauges and everything to work, and the AC and stuff, and that kit you buy, AC controls or that wiring harness, AC control and everything's on it. So that's kind of cool. I really want this to be just a healthy LS, you know, a good running car with like AC heat, you know, just something you could drive anywhere all day. So. That's what I'm hoping for anyway. I know it's going to take a little while to get there, but we will get there. I don't know if I showed y'all the uh, power harness all taped up and everything, but I've already got a bunch of stuff in the way. But it's taped up. It works out really, works out pretty good. I got the header over here and everything. So yeah, you can't even see it. Yeah, that worked out really good. So that's cool. I'm pretty sure the, uh, the wiring harness I'm talking about it doesn't come with that yeah like reverse lights and everything i would love for all that stuff to work and you can make it work with the way i have everything now but boy is it a headache i've already been through it one time i don't want to do it again so yeah i'll probably just save up a little money here and there and buy that eventually all right it's enough of me rambling um 
probably going to move on. I got to actually tighten the in, the uh, the engine mounts down to the uh, K member because I got them just like loosely in there right now. So I'm going to tighten those down real quick and then we'll put the exhaust on this thing. Get close to that first fire up. All right, guys, we're moving right along. I got the uh, air filter in. I got the little shield on. I got the little stop for the uh, throttle cable put in there. Um, let's see here. We got the headers in right now at the moment. We got coolant in the radiator. So, getting really close. I'm about to put the coil packs and wires in this thing. Then we're going to wire a separate, you know, a new fuel pump relay because the factory Mazda stuff is garbage. Uh, so, I'm going to get that knocked out. And then we'll be ready for a test fire, which is going to be awesome. Um, sorry for the wind. It's just the way it is. Can't ever do shit. Um, yeah, I'm gonna get that knocked out and then we'll get this thing uh, for test fire with the you know open headers and then I gotta make a you know make a diff brace or try to make the one I have work and put the drive shaft in all that stuff and then it'll actually be a driving car but we're also gonna throw the coilovers and wheels off the other car and get this thing pretty much where the white car was before I tore it apart to upgrade everything yeah so all right we'll finish this few little stuff and then we'll get that test fire in here so thanks Chris Okay, to be honest, I can't really actually remember where I left off the last video, but um, for sure I know I didn't record any of the electrical stuff. One, because um, I like destroyed my fingers. <laughs> totally is my fault, but so we got the fans hooked up. And I'll kind of run you through what I did for the uh, fans and the fuel system on this thing, so. But I just made like a small little harness, adapting harness that would adapt to like the fans that I, I was running to the factory uh, RX-7 and I went into the floor to where the ECU was and I found the signal wire for the fans and just hooked that to the GMC uh, to the ECU and you know it's basically it's cutting the fans on when it needs it when the engine gets the temperature geez rambling around that one <laughs> but yeah anyway so got the signal wire from the ECU hooked it to the signal wire for the relay so now the GM uh, ECU cuts the fans on like it should which is why I want I can't stand had like cut switches on and stuff it's it's a nightmare I like that and as far as the fuel system let me get in this thing real quick my cripple hands <clears throat> and for the fuel system I got a bunch of mess back here I know like I said been doing this kind of chaotic all I did was I just stripped the harness back you can kind of see where that's all new black tape and pulled out the uh, factory power wire ran that to a relay that I made myself put a red nut right here so it would hold it and look kind of cool and way too much wire but I'm gonna put like you know a zip tie or something to hold that out of the way and I'm running power to the battery which would be right back there and you know signal for this is going from you know up to the ECU so the ECU is cutting it on and also it's where I stopped the last last night there was a, like a dent right here, kind of heated that up and bent it back out. And also fixed my gas door, which was broken. Since I got the car, I um, think it's like a common issue with the FDs. <coughs> like these little things break. There's supposed to be something right there to hold the gas door, but that's, um, that's broke off. But yeah, I had another one from a parts car. I just threw that on there. But yeah, that's the whole reason why LS swapping this thing. I know a lot of people don't like, you know, LS swapping. Just the RX-7s in general, like, for some reason. If you put an LS and an RX-7, people lose their freaking mind. It don't matter, like a Lamborghini, whatever else. I don't, I don't know. It doesn't really matter usually, but that was the whole purpose behind doing this. This car is, like, really, it's on the edge of going and being a nice car or going and being crap. And I'm tired of seeing it sit around my yard because I'm poor and can't afford a rotary engine and that's what it was about I mean it's like I needed another <clears throat> somewhere between three to five thousand dollars to get this thing to where it was functional you know you could drive it because the coilovers are you know the factory suspension shot so you have to get coilovers I needed a good standalone and a wiring harness and having it tuned I mean that's a lot of work a lot of headaches so that's what I'm saying if both the cars are LS swapped, I could take all the stuff off the white car, put it on this car, and then buy all the new stuff for the white car, 
And you know, like I said, upgrading both cars at once is why I look at it. So, and I got a cool S14. Well, I think say cool, but I got an S14 for you know, Ellis swapping my car. So, pretty good, I think. But yeah, um, so the money that I was gonna put in the Montego car, I can then take that money and buy way cooler stuff for the white car, and it will be a nicer car, which is the car I care about. So, like instead of spending. $1,300 on coilovers for this. I'm gonna spend like $1,600 on for coilovers on the, for the white car and have like really nice suspension on it. It's kind of like you know, like that. That's what I was thinking. But yeah, don't know why I'm in a talking mood this morning, but it's enough of me rambling. Um, what we have left to do, I have to get just a soft hose, a soft hose for the return for the power steering and for the power steering fluid. I have to. Remove the seats, remove the carpet so I can put the inside braces for the uh, transmission cross member. Gotta put the drive shaft in, gotta put the diff brace in, I have to put the rest of the exhaust on, and all that good stuff. But it does run right now with the way everything's wired up. Let me show you guys that real quick. It's on open headers, it's kind of loud and it's early, but hopefully. All my neighbors are up. So. It runs. So it just sounds like an old truck because, like I said, it's on just running the open headers at the moment. things to knock out and this thing will be drivable so but yeah anyway I'm gonna jump back into it like I said I'll probably get the the drive shaft and everything in get this thing set down finally yeah yeah probably uh, the rear differential thing I want to use the factory Mazda rear end in this car unless it have the 8.8 conversion kit I'm gonna put in the white one, which I've had for a long time. I just didn't want to do it and you know not redo the whole entire rear subframe and all that good stuff, which I don't have the money to do that, so that's why I haven't done it. <laughs> but uh, I actually built a differential brace for that car if you remember. Well, like I said, um I think the first one it bent, so I made a second one with stronger metal, and then that one started bending the floor. So then I bought one and that thing bent like immediately uh, didn't hold up at all and i know sicky makes one that looks pretty good um but it's like it hangs really low i know for a fact that my exhaust is gonna hit it because the, the exhaust that i built is pretty it's pretty big so <clears throat> i actually ended up ordering one for my was it henson or something like that and like i said you know it says allow like two three weeks or something like that well i waited like almost two months and i was like nope can't wait no longer so I got my money back so I basically copied what he's got going on with his it's kind of like just basically making a power arm so I'm hoping this will work and give me the room I need for my exhaust but I'm really worried that it's just going to break in my transmission so because you know bolts right at the back of the transmission but well anyway I'm rambling but check it out but this is what I come up with I just kind of cut the factory power arm whatever you want to call it and got some tube I mean, it's boxed in, like I said, I still have to um, finish welding it and everything. And my welder is really for sheet metal, so it's not actually wanting to weld this thick tubing. And then, you know, that will bolt right to the transmission. And I'll build some, you know, metal plates to go on the transmission to help it not put so much stress on the aluminum. But I just want to show you guys this thing real quick. When I get it finished welded and painted and everything and it's in the car, I'll show you what it looks like again. But if my welds will hold up, I don't think this thing's gonna break. So, or I hope it doesn't. I'm really tired of having rear end problems with this thing. So this thing's been sitting for a long time. Um, I know for a fact that it's had 
four in rotary engines in it. This is the fifth engine for sure, which is LS. So it's actually going to be a drivable car now. This car's only got 90,000 miles on it. I said, guys, I love rotary engines, but man, they are garbage. If you're an honest rotary person and you can't admit that rotaries are garbage, like, you're just, I don't know, you're in denial. But, and now, it, it used to be fun when they were cheap, but now they're expensive garbage. And I'm not about that. I can deal with garbage, not expensive garbage. <laughs> but yeah, like I said, when this car was made, it had the factory engine in it, of course. Well, apparently that blew up somewhere along the lines. And then it got a Mazda reman engine in it. And then it had a got a bad coolant seal. And then I bought it with the bad coolant seal, pulled that engine out, put a used um, low mileage engine in it. No joke, it lasted like, man, I don't even know, not even 100 miles. And it blew up again. Then I pulled that out, had, you know, the half bridge port, and, you know, when I thought, you know, oh, I got big dreams, guys, ever, like everybody does, but couldn't afford to do that, you know, half bridge port, all that fancy stuff with, like, you know, just couldn't do it. So it was too much money. So I pulled that out. Now we're going LS. Yeah. I would love to have a rotary, especially a 20B, but it's just too much money. I mean, you're talking, what, eight grand for just the engine, and then by the time you get a transmission, which, of course, you have to get a T56 because the FD transmission is garbage. So that's another two grand. So I mean, like you're you're ten thousand dollars in the engine and transmission, and then you got to get it rebuilt. So surely that's another five thousand, six thousand dollars, and then you got to buy injectors and a turbo and an exhaust. I mean, it, dude, nah, can't do it. I wish I could, but just you know, I can't. You know, I don't I don't make that kind of money. Not even close. That's like, you know almost my year's salary to get a 20B in an RX-7 running and driving. And that's not a joke. That's no exaggeration. Stupid money. Yeah, I paid like 3,500 bucks for this LS1 NT56 and then another $2,000 for the swap kit to bolt it into these cars. So, you know, it is what it is, guys. <laughs> all right, enough of me rambling. Like I said, um, I think I've already showed you all the wiring. We got all that stuff squared away. Everything's working. So, yeah, get this finished. With the exhaust and then we'll take it around the block and then uh we'll move on to putting the coilovers and the wheels and tires and stuff on it and this will actually be where my white car was before i took it apart like a crazy person so yeah all in the name of uh upgrades yay more power all right i'm gonna get to it <laughs> all right guys that was definitely a headache but i got the diff brace done it's all bolted up i'll show you what it looks like real quick i think it's gonna work out pretty good i just i'm probably not even gonna shift this thing hard if it breaks i'm gonna cry check it out but that's it all mounted up gonna be some weird angles i don't have a lift i'm poor what can i say but that's where it's mounted to the transmission i put like this little this plate runs across the front and it's bolted up into these two places so seems like it should should hold up seems pretty solid but all right since i got that done all i gotta do now is i've already put uh, fluid in the transmission i need to put the power steering uh, return line on fill it up with fluid put the exhaust on and drop this thing on the ground and actually take it around the block real quick so next time you see me he'll be on the ground and we're going for that little quick test ride all right i'm gonna get this few stuff knocked out and then we'll get back all right guys uh, i'm kind of running out of time got dirt on my face so we might do that joy ride later but it's running i got my buddy in there he's gonna back it up for me real quick you go ahead and back it up a little bit see what she'll do it's actually moving. <laughs> it's pretty cool, but like I saw some other issues that I need to address. Like there's like some loose suspension stuff. So I'm out of time. I'm gonna end the video here. But next time it will be well, well sorted, and we'll actually take it out and have some fun with it. A couple little reds real quick. Doritos are good, they're just not good in RX-7s.